everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Bow Divas. Um, we're here with Julie. Hello, Julie. Hi. And Annalisha. Finally, Hi. finally, we're able to get back together. And we do have a guest this evening. Um, a few months ago, in the at the ASA in Foley, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Tara Hopkins, and she is the wife of longtime bow hunter and tournament archer Jeff Hopkins. And at that event, she was promoting and doing some fundraising for a program that her and her husband are involved in called Disabled Veterans Archery Assistance Program. And so we've invited her to join us and educate, educate us a little bit about the program and, uh, you know, and just also about her history and Jeff's history with archery and, and how we as the archery community can help to promote it and support it in any way that we can. So hello, Tara. Is it Tara or Tara? It's Tara. You have it right. Ta <laughs> the first time. Okay. And hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. Hi. So Hi. Th thanks so much for joining us. Oh, I'm sorry. We had a, I have dogs in the house and I think a leaf blew outside. <laughs> no, I think a <laughs> but, cat or something came down. They were oh, well, that, that too. So anyway, so thanks for joining us, and thanks it, for having, thanks for inviting me. And you're in Iowa, is that correct? Yes, we are. You you and Jeff live in Iowa, and tell us just kind of give us a little bit of background of you know Jeff Hopkins. Everybody pretty much knows him. He's been a longtime bow hunter, but give us a little synopsis of his background in archery and bow hunting and that sort of thing, and then also how you came into it. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Jeff and I started dating in 1987, <laughs> long before Jeff became Jeff Hopkins' professional archer. Uh, we both grew up on the eastern shore of Maryland, and we got married in 1993. And three weeks after his first ASA tournament, which was the very first ASA, which was February of 1993. Oh, wow. And Jeff had shot a lot of local archery tournaments mm -hmm. leading up to that. He was winning everything locally. I was shooting as well, not winning everything locally. <laughs> 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 I, I have shot for fun over the years. Right. Never competitively like Jeff. That's all right. I have shot. Mm -hmm. I have shot a little bit of ASA and a little bit of NFAA, but really most of the archery that I have 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 done has been outside of the limelight that Jeff shoots mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, really, we got married, and first shoot he finished second, mm -hmm. and second shoot he finished third, and we were off to the races with this career for him. Right. And mm -hmm. We made a lot of sacrifices early on. Um, you know, I knew that it would probably be a few years that we would have to, you know, commit to, to this. And other than that, Jeff had a lot of other outdoor experience, hunting, and mm -hmm. that's certainly what got him into archery to start with, but also growing up in a family farming right. business. And, you know, those were the other options for him, but certainly the one he enjoyed the most was shooting his bow and the allure and the opportunity to be able to do something that you love for right. a living. Now, do you um, also, that's what bow, everybody, do you also bow hunt with Jeff or, or are you just, more... I, I haven't, I haven't, uh, recent, a few years ago, I got tennis elbow really bad and, Ooh, and you know, yeah. I guess I kind of have that fear factor of it coming back, mm -hmm. but, um, I do plan on shooting again and Good. hopefully that will be coming within the next few months so that I can kind of get, get started back on that again. Awesome. But I do, I do hunt otherwise. Uh, I go with a gun and we turkey hunt together and dove hunt together and duck and goose hunt. So I enjoy the outdoors with him and with our son who also shares the same passion. I was going to say, I, I met your son, um, I think it was last summer, a friend of mine was shooting in that known 50 class and he said, hey, sure. do you recognize this kid? And I looked at him and I was like... <laughs> Man, he looks for so familiar. And did you have you seen her son before? Their son? I don't think so. It's like it's like a, a mini, mini Jeff. A mini. Okay. Well, not really mini because he's like how tall is he, Tara? He's like he's the same height as Jeff. Yeah. Wow. He's that they <clears throat> six five. I younger guess, version. Point, I mean, so. wow. wow. 
Yeah, he he looks. You, you I'll have to be on the the lookout for him now. You'll know you'll know it's Jeff Hopkins' son as soon as you see him because <laughs> I'm telling you what he looks. He's the spitting image of Jeff. Mm-hmm. I mean, and how old is he? He's 18. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he's. And our daughter's a few years older, and we have grandchildren. Is she as tall twins. as? Is she as tall as as your son? <laughs> she's five. She's five foot eleven. I am the midget in the family. Oh wow! Yeah, and you're pretty tall too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm jealous. <laughs> well, well, one of our bow divas, Annalisha, is super tall. How, how tall I'm are I'm 5'11". Yeah, 5'11". So. Awesome. Yeah. We use her, like Julie and I are the shorties, so we like, can you reach that up there? <laughs> yeah, and I have incredibly my, my long arms. Was, my grandmother was 4'11". Oh, my gosh. Oh, she always <laughs> told me that, she always said, it's so nice that you're tall. Yeah. And the two, thing, the two things that she thought was most important that, you know, height would bring is you could reach things in your kitchen cabinets and you didn't have to have your pants hemmed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that so true. It. Those are very, uh, but sometimes it's hard to find the inseam long enough. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> there's that too, so you especially your, on your exactly. son. Yeah. Do you have to go to the farm and home to get those, <laughs> those britches for Big that boy? <laughs> well, I will say both of our kids. Yes. We have had problems over the years getting them length needed in in pants and and really you can only find them i'm not joking at a farm and home or a western wear store usually Mm -hmm. with a long seam Uh uh-huh right at least fortunately amazon fortunately amazon came along so they provide a lot of options (laughs) yeah that's true (laughs) that's always good that's That's always good so i'm curious how did you guys get from the east coast to iowa (laughs) well Jeff has had a long time dream. I knew when when we met and we first started dating, I knew that he wanted to own, own his own farm one day. Mm-hmm. We we shared that he shared that goal with me very early on, probably date number one. <laughs> yeah. um, and he also shared with me that hey, just so you know, I like to hunt. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, first date, and I said, well, that's wonderful. He said, no, no. I, I think you really need to understand that I like to hunt a lot. <laughs> and I said, do you think I don't have anything else going on in my life? That's wonderful for you. <laughs> so we we hit it off, but apparently that, that, that can be an issue at times with one that likes to hunt more than the other and being right. gone and yeah. extended trips and things like that. Yeah. So, right. Well, um, and if he's like, but, like my husband, he's been obsessed with hunting at times, not so much in the last few years, but there's been times where like, I can't hardly get him out of the woods. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. You know, especially in the right so in the middle back, of deer back season. To, back to your, back to your question. How do we get to Iowa? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, you know, when we got to the point that we were making some decent money, we couldn't afford anything locally of any size because the land's so expensive back yeah. east. So, you know, we worked our way west. We went to Kentucky. We were there for four years and and worked our way to Iowa. We in a covered wagon. In, Iowa. in a covered wagon. <laughs> it seems, right? No, no covered wagon. We're not that a Steak with a flag. This is ours. <laughs> but I was just anyway, going so vision. yeah, that's how we ended up in Iowa and just really looking for a great place for us to put roots down and we love it here in Lucas County, Iowa. It's beautiful. The people are extremely nice. Oh, Land is affordable. Right. I am a real estate agent here um, locally as well. So I've been in the business for just a little over a year. Oh, wow. And it's, it's, a, great, it's a great area to live. Very great good. area to raise a family. Oh, yeah. And, big, the, and the hunting is incredible. Yeah, so. big deer. I was getting ready to say big deer. <laughs> yeah, you kind of have all those. Big deer. Big all yeah, those nice I don't know if anybody saw Jeff. I don't know if anybody saw Jeff and Scott's huge bucks that they harvested last fall, but we, I, we are I'm sure we did. I was going to say, I thought I'm I sure saw it. I'm sure we and odd over it. Um, I could have sworn at the time he was still with Matthews, I could have sworn it was on Matthews' Facebook page. But maybe it I was. was. It, it was. It yeah. was towards the end, the end of October. Yeah, I remember seeing, I do remember seeing it, at least Jeff with a, a big deer. And I was like, oh. It was two two twenty three. Was it a wow. rifle hunt or was it, was it a bow hunt? No. It was a bow no, hunt. No, it was a bow. Wow. Was a bow. Gosh, mm-hmm. that's so nice. Two twenty three. wow. Is that the biggest one? I mean, did you guys have that size of deer back in Maryland? No, we did not. Yeah, I was going to say. 
So that's probably another reason Iowa was on the radar, probably, because they do. They do. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It was yeah. a factor. Yeah, I could imagine. I Is could it the imagine. one with like 50 points? We looked in Kansas. Points. We looked in Montana. We looked in oh, Illinois. Oh, wow. Yeah. One, one, of the, one of the things that's very nice about what Jeff does for a living is that he and we and our family have been able to see a lot of the United States. Mm-hmm. And I do think that that helps mm-hmm. for yeah. making a move. Yeah. You know, you, you kind of have a better idea of what, what's out there to choose from and what you want, you know, you can get pretty selective. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah. You can kind of, kind of um, scout out areas ahead of time and see what kind of communities you like and how the people mm-hmm. are and, um, how good the deer are. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. exactly. That's the important mm-hmm. part. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, well, you know, one of the things I really wanted to talk to you about, and, the, and part of the reason we kind of pushed for to try to do it before the next ASA event is because I know you'll be doing some work with this program down there. But, um, you know, how I met you was through the Disabled Veterans Archery Assistance Program. So tell us a little of the history of it. And I know, I think Jeff is one of the founders of it, if I'm correct. Yes. Um, Jeff is the CEO Hmm. and the CFO is Paul Whitaker. Okay. And he is a disabled vet and he lived in Cremona, Kentucky. And we, coincidence may have it, we met Paul um, March the 20th of 2009 mm-hmm. when we had just finished shooting an indoor tournament at, in uh, Louisville, mm-hmm. NFAA. And we spent a couple days there in Kentucky at our land that, that we bought there at the time. We were not living there at the time. And we headed east that, that following morning and there was a burning vehicle around the bend, a major interstate on our trip home. Oh, wow. And Paul was uh, in that vehicle. Oh. And we pulled over. And my husband went running up there and pulled him from the burning vehicle. And Jeff had fallen in August of the year before, of 2008. He broke his shoulder in three places and crushed his axillary nerve. Wow. So he wasn't what you would call 100% healed up, but he was back to normal life and back to shooting and doing the things that he enjoys doing. Um, but he had, Paul was, was T-boned basically by a white van and the older gentleman that fell asleep, I believe, at the wheel. Oh. And when he crashed into him in his Jeep, it pinched his leg and he could not get out of the oh, Jeep. No. So Ooh. anyway, Jeff almost severed his leg pulling him out. Oh my gosh. And that's how, and within about 30 seconds, the entire vehicle was engulfed in flames. Oh wow. So he saved his life. So timing is everything. Mm-hmm. And we were meant to meet our families, you know, have become closer and we didn't realize Paul was calling quite a bit last year, early on in the year. And typically we hear from him on his birthday or Christmas or the day of the accident, um, but Jeff was hearing from him quite a bit more early in the year last year. And Jeff said, "Hey, why don't you come to an ASA tournament? We're going to be in London, Kentucky, first weekend in June mm-hmm. last year. So bring bring your family, and it'd be great for all of us to get together." And so we did that. And Paul and his wife Betty hit it off with archery. They couldn't wait to get bows and mm. start shooting. That's awesome. And our families had dinner that night together, and our our kids were there, our grandkids were there, his kids were there, and, you know, what a great coming together for all of us. And, you know, what we didn't realize, the reason why Paul was calling a lot more, is he was suffering from PTSD. Mm. And um, talking to Jeff, talking to our family, and you know, that helped Mm -hmm. ease it a little bit. So when he got the bow in his hands and he started shooting, inspired by going to London, Kentucky, he shot Metropolis last year, the ASA in Metropolis. Very cool. And he didn't score well, but he didn't care. Right. He was hooked at that point. And for him, shooting his bow was very therapeutic, Mm -hmm. almost a healing aspect. And... He no longer needed to go to therapy appointments. Right. And worked himself off of medication that he was on. 
cool. Oh, that's and great. now wow. his bow is his therapy. Hmm. And this experience that he had, you know, gone through and connection with Jeff, he said, I would want to help other people, other veterans that are suffering, whether it doesn't matter what percentage disabled they are. We are eager to try to help as many of them as we possibly can. And that was the birth of DVAP, mm-hmm. Disabled Veterans Archery Assistance Program. And this year, as you had, had mentioned, um, we have been doing fundraising at all of the ASA tournaments, and we're right. hoping to expand that into the IBO tournaments and potentially some NFAA events as well. Mm-hmm. And we're also looking at other non-endemic sponsors outside of archery as well to possibly sure. get donations and, and drive more in that way. But this is a fundraising year for us. We have an application developed, and we are soliciting people to, you know, any disabled veteran, anybody knows, uh, to get this application in their hand, fill it out, and turn it in. And, you know, certainly there's going to be a qualifying process to go through. We're right. not going to be able to help everybody, but we're going to try to help as many people as we possibly can. Maybe that's equipment for some people. Well, that, know, that, yeah, that, that was going to be one of my questions, too. As far as your vision for the program, what will that... So the vision for the program, the vision for the program is to... Starting next year, have some teams together of these disabled vets that we're paying for their entry fees, we're paying their travel expenses, their their lodging, to be able to come to a national event of this magnitude, to have the experience, to to have an archer mentor them, Mm. you know, receive that type of mentoring feedback of, you know, to help them to be successful and hopefully stay in touch with them you know, going forward. But the ultimate goal is for them to take that experience, take that back to their home area. And whether it's a indoor league or an outdoor 3D tournament, whatever venue they're interested in shooting, but for them to get others involved um, right. out of their house, involved shooting a bow and, you know, potentially have that type of therapeutic healing that Paul has experienced right. and many other archers. There are several others, um, veterans that, that currently do shoot and that are, have been disabled and are disabled. And I, I think it's just wonderful that they have an outlet. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I could totally see how, especially if you had even just like the mental side where it was a PTSD or something like that. Cause Archery requires, sure. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, I don't know why, but it really does, en- it engulfs your mind mm-hmm. in something entirely different, and mm-hmm. and really requires a lot of focus, and yeah, just right. redirecting and of your brain, I guess, if you would. Yeah. <laughs> right, and see. you know, veterans are, they're very competitive, they were when sure, they, they were are. in their... <laughs> In their field of field of interest, so it falls in line, and they want to do well. Mm-hmm. They want to succeed at it, and you know whether it's a bullseye or a you know eleven ring or twelve ring on their target, they want to be able to hit it. Exactly, and that's it's something for them to work towards. Right, that's really great. Now, your friend Paul has he he's recovered from his car accident, also though. Is that correct, or well? He certainly has lingering effects from from the accident. He's had numerous surgeries to, you know, repair his leg right. from where it was nearly severed. So, you know, he does have a, a physical element as well that he's not the way he used to be, mm-hmm. right. you know. Mm-hmm. But he he can still walk and gets around, and he does amazingly well. We are very fortunate to have met him and to know him and his family, and I know they have been through a lot from his accident and everything that, that they've been through together. He was planning on being lifetime in uh, the Army, and, you know, it right. really was a complete alteration of what he thought his life plan was going to be. Right. So everybody, had, you know, we all have instances that we have to regroup in life. 
and figure out what new direction we're going to go. But it's kind of nice when you get to make that choice rather than, in this instance, that choice was made for him because Mm -hmm. of his uh, physical disability, he could no longer serve. Right. Well, and that's the nice thing about archery because we've we actually had a, a a interviewee on several months ago, Christina Jones, and she has she has a lot of injuries to her arm, so she shoots with one arm and a mouth tab. And so the cool thing about archery is even if you have physical disabilities, mm-hmm. there's a lot of times you can still shoot. You can adapt. Mm-hmm. You can really adapt in Absolutely. archery. It's not like it requires massive strength. You don't have to right. run. You know, if right. you even struggle getting around on your feet, mm-hmm. maybe an ASA wouldn't be the way to go. But there's plenty of stuff to do indoors. Yeah, right. there's plenty of venues. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's it is very, I guess, friendly to people who maybe even have physical disabilities, as well as you know, if you if you've got a, you know, a, yep, a either a one or both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. You mentioned um, the application. And you're, when are you going to start taking applications? We are already taking applications. Okay. And how can somebody Paul, get... Paul, bring, Paul brings them to the event. Oh, okay. And we will we will eventually have it online. It's not online right yet. Okay. Uh, but it will be. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I guess that's where I was going with that is, um, are you just primarily looking for applicants at archery tournaments or are you just... Are you looking elsewhere for applicants? And the reason I'm asking elsewhere, we are looking elsewhere as well. Okay. Well, Um, I work on, I work on an air force base. And and so, you know, I was, you know, I can talk to you about it later, but of course my mind's immediately thinking, I was thinking, okay, how can I get a hold of somebody on base to see if maybe we can get some applications into their hands of, you know, disabled veterans that they might know of. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I can have Paul email you that. Okay. But yes, it will be online. We we do have a website up and running and we do have Facebook and Instagram. So uh, if there's a, an interest and somebody wants to reach out, mm-hmm. probably if they can't find an application, certainly online or anything like that, they can also reach out to us um, in the other social media outlets. Okay. Right. I was going to say, is there, there's probably an email contact on the website too, I would imagine. I've yeah, looked so. at the website a couple of times I didn't uh, today. I didn't get that far as far as contact information, right. but I, you know. It, it is on there. Okay. okay. But as, you know, as far as appli- DVAP the application. Dot, org. Okay. Yeah. I've been on that a couple of times today, but like I said, I didn't realize as far as the application process, I was, we're in the middle of our state testing right now at school, so <laughs> I was sneaking Understand peeks when I could. Well. Very familiar with that. <laughs> yeah. Ju- Julie's a school teacher, and you're at which? Tell her which Air Force Base. I'm at Whiteman Air, Whiteman Force, Air Base Force Base in Knob Noster, Missouri. Right, and awesome. so they have a. Is it elementary school or is it everything mm-hmm. K through twelve? No, um, it's actually it's Knob Noster School District, which is a Missouri public school district. Okay, but the district has an agreement with the air force and so we do operate it's a public school but it's on on the base base, so it's strictly air force children who live on base they attend school there and then there's a middle school and high school in town Hmm. yeah it's probably the best job i've ever had but um you know anyway any mention aside from you know family being in the military anything military related veteran related uh the longer i'm at whiteman the more my heart goes out and it's like, okay, let's do something for these guys mm-hmm. and well, these I ladies. Would, I would even say like when we go to a lot of shoots, I think a significant number of people that we shoot with are former military. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A pretty, pretty significant yeah. number. Yeah. yeah. I, ag- I agree with you completely. Um, you know, I couldn't tell you and exactly. Those, and those people, those people are usually more apt to come and visit us at, at the booth mm-hmm. on a quicker pace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, we we usually interact and see most of them. Mm-hmm. They they come. They know the type of work that's needed. That would make sense. So on the other end of that, it, as you're seeking people, you know, disabled veterans to participate and and basically get assistance from the program, are you are you also taking on volunteers that would act as? mentors on a local level for archers or how or do you have anything set up on that yet did that make sense there's nothing written and set up at this point Uh, as we near towards the end of this year meaning august september time frame 
We are going to identify the mentors that we need. Okay. We have talked with, we have talked with many of the pros and some of the semi pros and, uh, you know, we, we've talked with a few people already, but there's nothing concrete at this point, but yes, anything that we can do to give them the connections right. with people that can help them in the sport, give them something different to think about and kind of channels their brain in a completely different direction mm-hmm. and with archery and it, it's it's just such a awesome therapeutic you know opportunity for 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 them yeah it really sounds like it i mean we all know personally what archery means to us and what it's done for us in our lives right but just like yeah. you were talking about how it helped him with his ptsd mm-hmm. and you know right i'm sure it's going to oh. help Oh, I could far totally, more people. Yeah, I could totally see where it would be a huge benefit mm-hmm. to right. really anybody. And even with a variety of struggles, even if it's not a PTSD, even with a physical dis- wouldn't it be cool at a big event to have like just a whole group of them show up and shoot yeah. their own? That's what know. we're planning. Yeah, that's, that's what, what we're planning. It would planning. almost be Fantastic. cool to have like their own like class. Like, yeah, like a tournament. Like a military, in a tournament. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And it yeah. might get to that point, mm-hmm. right? You know, we we don't know yet how much we're going to be able to raise and how many people we're going to be able to help, but we're going to try to do as much as we possibly can in right. both Great. camps. <laughs> well, and and tell us a little bit because I know that you've had and, and it sounds like Jeff Scott had a pretty good success and you as well getting some manufacturing because you guys have given away a bow and a raffle at every yep. single ASA. Mm-hmm. So. C- Kind of give us a synopsis of that, what's going on there. We have been warmly embraced by almost all the manufacturers Hmm. that they want to participate. They can see what the value is going to be to these veterans and and their families and potentially their their home areas and and carrying the torch to their home, you know, town and surrounding areas to help other people, to help other veterans, get them out of their house, get them shooting. But the many of the manufacturers have, have definitely been so supportive, donating bows to the program and allowing us the opportunity to, to raffle them off to, A, raise awareness and raise funds right. that is needed. Certainly, you know, you don't, you can't start a nonprofit for free, right. it, you know, mm-hmm. the, the government charges money for it was like eight hundred and some dollars just to start the nonprofit. Oh, you're it, kidding me! You yeah, know, that's ridiculous. no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Good grief! So, you know, we we are trying to do the best that we can to raise as much money as we can, not only to get get the program on its feet, but to get that steam behind us mm-hmm. to get more money and more funds coming in. And as I said, we are looking at at you know companies outside of archery. You know, we don't want to put all that just on, you know, the, the small nucleus right. of archery manufacturers that exist today. Mm-hmm. Right. I know all, almost all of them have been very willing to participate, whether, you know, it's arrows or, you know, bows, releases, what whatever that manufacturer produces. Most all of them have been very eager and happy to, to participate in the program. Right. I saw, let's see, I know that you've given away a Hoyt, a Bowtech. I can't remember what else. What's coming, like, New what's breed. New, breed. New Breed? What's coming yeah. up, um, the next tournaments in Georgia? What's your um, bow that you I think it's a toss-up, so I'm not 100% sure yet. Okay. I know Jeff was working on that today. And we don't have a final on that one okay. yet. So mm-hmm. I apologize that I don't have the No, that's okay. That's to okay. That's to okay. To so I don't normally go to the ASAs. How much are you selling the raffle tickets for? I think they're... They're $5 a piece or five tickets for $20. Okay. Which is not bad if you no. get a brand new bow. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty... I was all about that. No matter Heck what yeah. the bow was, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> Anyway, so, and if you don't win it, then you still know your money has went to a good cause. So. Sure. Right. Absolutely. That's the, Have you absolutely. had anybody donate it back? I was wondering that. Yeah. <laughs> have you? That's yes, awesome. we have. The That's gentleman good. that won the Newbury bow donated it back to the program. Yeah. Good for him. Mm-hmm. Cool. Very I'm not good. donating mine back. 
<laughs> when I want it. You don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> I he would. He was in a unique I situation would. that you know, he already had <laughs> bows and everybody that he knows had bows and it was very That's cool, very generous though. of him to to yeah. to donate that back That's to the awesome. program. I'm on the website here and um there is a place where if individuals want to donate mm. they can. It's on the main page. It's D V A A P dot org. Yeah. And if you scroll down a little bit, it says support DVAP, donate today, and there's a donate button. So um, any listeners out there that feel led to send in a personal donation or whatever, you can go to that website and contribute to this um, organization that I'm totally digging right now. I, yeah. I love what you're doing. Awesome. I appreciate you ladies taking your time out to bring awareness to it and allow me to come on to the podcast and, and talk about it and I couldn't be happier. Yeah. Well, and I think you're going to, you have, are you going to have a booth in Georgia also? You'll have, you'll have a booth at every yes. single ASA from now going forward. Is that right? Yes. Right. We are confirmed at every ASA. What about the remainder of the show. Good. And you said also IBO events too? We are working to, to get into the IBO. We're hoping to have a booth for Pipestem, cool. West Virginia. Has ASA been pretty supportive? I'm sure they probably have. No. ASA has been awesome. Mike, yeah. Lorraine, they have been incredible. They have been incredible to Paul, to the program. They can't do enough to, to help us. And we certainly appreciate that so much to, you know, for them to give us a, an opportunity to, to have a booth there, to get out, educate people and have an opportunity right. to raise funds. So, yes, we are very appreciative for, for their help and support of the program. Yeah. That's great. Well, you know, I know we're all excited to see it take off and mm-hmm. grow and see some of the the benefits that it brings to some people because, you know, I mean, I think even us, sometimes we use our tree as our own therapy when we've had crappy days. Sure, mm-hmm. I do. And we don't have mm-hmm. nearly the stress or issues that, that some disabled veterans have. We're not even in the same ballpark. So I can't imagine how much it could be beneficial. I feel feel exactly the same way. (laughs) I don't know. Going into the high school. I talk, I talk, you know, I've talked with a lot of the veterans that have come up and, you know, they've, they've shared their personal stories and, you know, I, I just can't imagine it. Mm. You know, Um, I'm so appreciative for, all of them and the sacrifices they have made, you know, to serve our country. And it's the least we could do is to try to help them get on their feet Absolutely. and get healthy mm-hmm. yeah. and have a venue that they can enjoy. I mm-hmm. completely agree mm-hmm. <laughs> because, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's with all the branches, but in the air force, the, the, the way of thinking is service before self. Yeah. And Absolutely. So, so, yeah, I mean, I think we, as a society, this is just my opinion. I'm going on a little soapbox here. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, but, you know, it is service before self. And I think that some of the general population doesn't understand that. And especially these servicemen and women who have families, they're all in the military. Oh, yeah. Yes, they are. You know, they all they sacrifice and contribute. And, you know, I think we need to... Um, do a better job of showing them the respect that they deserve right? and Absolutely. to um, honor programs such as this one to uh, give back to these people who yeah. have given so much to us and, and, and to our country. Yep. So, okay, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, stepping you, down. <laughs> you probably do see it because of, of where you're working mm-hmm. at and seeing all the, the military people there and Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and dealing with the youngins that got right. folks over there. And... Yeah, I mean, that's just like, for example, yesterday um, we had a kiddo that left, and they were transferred to Okinawa. Oh wow! Mm. So you know, boom, they're gone. They were here for the beginning of this year till now, and it's the whole family. You know, yeah. the, the parent gets transferred, and if the family can go, then they're gone. Right. On the other hand, sometimes y- y- you know the kids mom or dad is TDY or deployed or whatever, and they're off somewhere for six months to a year. And, and that does um, present a hardship to the family. Mm-hmm. And so sure. working with these veterans, like I said, I think is a, like a program like this 
you know, and I'm talking active duty, of course, but um, disabled veterans, just, mm-hmm. it's just a good way to remind them and show them that they're People valuable and we them. appreciate them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and their Absolutely. families, you know, communicate that to their families because it is a family. Well, once you put a, a bow in a, a veteran's hand, the whole family's going to have one, by yeah, the way. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it'd be a family application. It becomes a, a wide, a little spreading. It can, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you really, at least, <clears throat> and, and I'm not trying to, like, take attention off of what we're talking about, but... Um, going back to how it affects the whole family and everything, it's a real eye opener when you are working with military families every day. When you have second graders that are using words like deployed mm-hmm. and TDY and PCS and those sorts of things, and that really drives it home for you that it's not just, you know, these pictures of people in uniform on the news. These are real mm-hmm. people doing to real them. jobs, and they have. I'm laughing because Katie had a teacher that that was reserve and he got deployed, but she kept coming home telling me he got deported. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't think he was deported. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you know, these little kids that you don't think would know this no. terminology. <laughs> she didn't. She kept telling me he deported. Was deported. <laughs> but anyway, you know, my whole point is I think this is a wonderful thing that you guys yeah. have started and I, I'm all in whatever, you know, whatever word spreading we well, can do or, you know, anything to we will definitely get your be story out there. To all of you as we get the mentor program, you know, ironed out and ready to go into action starting in the new year. But we Great. will definitely be reaching out. That's wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah, and I've noticed that you've had a lot of other, the pros have shared it. And I think Jeff's kind of even rallied a lot of those folks and they have some of those guys have so many followers that they're mm-hmm. they're really great resources too to mm-hmm. kind of drive awareness and yep. contributions to the program. And then um, what we can do once we get the pro- we'll put the podcast it'll go Thursday. out Thursday night, mm-hmm. and then you should be able just to copy our link to your DVAP page if you want to, mm-hmm. just so people can click on it and just listen. <clears throat> I will do that. So. Yeah. I'll I'll send you a message when we get ready to do that too, but that's mm-hmm. really great. So I appreciate that, and I certainly will do that. And it's been a pleasure talking with you ladies tonight. Well, it is. I'm not going to let you go that easy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're, not oh, you're not off the hook yet. You're not off the hook yet. So we got to <laughs> ask her her our our normal question. Or did you guys have? Yeah, anything we just else? have a few more questions. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's fine. Okay, when you um you said you shot. And and you're um, mm-hmm. gonna pick it back up here pretty quick. Well, you, she actually is usually at the events, even when you're not shooting, right, Tara? I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I I go to as many events as I can. One of the things that's nice about my current career as a real estate agent is flexible, right? Mm-hmm. And prior to that, I have worked from the home. Yeah. I worked. I've worked in corporate credit card banking when we lived back east for 17 years. And that was, that was great and an awesome experience. And it was an hour drive each way every day. Oh, wow. And, you know, eventually with Jeff and his archery career, it took off and he was gone a lot. And you get to a point you have kids and mm-hmm. who's going to take care of the kids. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. So, um, you know, we, we made a shift and decided to, you know, focus on our family and, you know, we, had a lot of great opportunities traveling over the summer with our kids, taking them to every tournament Jeff went to. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, they all have a great appreciation for travel today as a result of it. So Scott just doesn't want to leave Iowa. (laughs) (laughs) It's because there's giant deer there. He comes to some of the tournaments, but he doesn't come to all of them. Mm -hmm. He, He loves Iowa and, his main love with archery is the hunting. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what he enjoys the most at this point. So you never know whether he'll, you know, decide to go into tournament archery right. uh, at some point. Right. Uh, he certainly shoots a lot, and, you know, that's a possibility, but that's up to him. We right. want him to be happy doing whatever he wants to do. Oh, he's probably in heaven if he likes to hunt, though. Yeah. In Iowa, yeah. Oh, he guys is. Are, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he right. is. Right. Just uh, living the dream. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. thinking we need to take a Bodiva's field trip sometime. Right. <laughs> we have a lot of locations <laughs> if, to go to. Yeah, I know we do. Uh-huh. And yeah. I, if I'm correct, don't you live, you live fairly 
close to John Dudley, I believe. Yeah, we're only about not too two, far. Two, not too we, far. Oh, farms, are you looking? Tell you were looking about, at me. I was yeah, like, our farms are about five miles apart, but we actually live about close to an hour apart where we live. Oh, that's close enough. That's not bad. Are you north, east, bad. west, south? Uh, John's north of us. He's in the Indianola area where he lives, oh, okay. and we live south. Um, so then you guys are outside of Sheraton. Really, only about two hours from probably where I live. <laughs> probably run yeah, into him in Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, go go ahead with your question, okay. Alicia. So. Okay. So, do you carry a chair around when you do shoot? N- no, do I. You- I don't shoot the tournaments at this point in time. Um, but when I do walk around with Jeff, when he shoots, I usually don't take a stool and I stand or walk or borrow someone else's if I have to take a five minute break. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, my question always is, is if you have anything special in your quiver or in your, your stool that, um, how about this? Does Jeff carry anything like, special, uh, yeah, like, a like a, a good luck charm yeah. or, or something mean you know memento of some sort a spare set of contacts <gasps> <laughs> i do the same that's what jeff makes sure that he has in his tool that's mm-hmm. a spare good. set of contacts yeah. i have rewetting drops i have a contact case with contacts in there <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah. that's well, has that ever yeah. that other than food and a water bottle and yeah. you mm-hmm. know uh, you know your typical Right. Necessary Stuff. Allen wrenches and, yeah. you know, bow parts that you might need when you're out there mm-hmm. on the range. Batteries for your lighted pack or something yeah. like that. Just the just the basics. Right. Well, and Julie always has a question. Yeah. Like so, ask. okay, think back to when you did shoot a little bit. Actually, we could yeah. have her. Maybe or, Jeff or, or, or maybe just in. tell on Jeff. Yeah, you yeah. can just tell on Jeff. <laughs> um, my, my question always is, you know, um, share your most embarrassing moment in archery. Oh, well, that's easy. I can share mine. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff probably has his own, you know, <laughs> list that he could go through from, you know, missing the last target when, you know, he was in position to win at Metropolis. And he could get into that one. Oh, no. Oh. Probably a, a, a few others. Is that when his release mine, broke? I Was that what? when his release broke? No. Oh, okay. We were watching him in the shoot down at Metropolis, and I believe it was in 07 or 08, 09, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I remember he was in the shoot down, and he went to shoot, and all of a sudden there was bang, his arrow hit the metal building back behind the targets. And everybody's that was, like... Yes, that's the one I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, everybody's and like... It, 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 I don't remember what the cause was from it. You, you're doing better than me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah and but everybody's like, oh, my I God. I wasn't there. I wasn't there at that tournament at that time. Yeah. But that was rough. Now, for me, I shot the ASA in Craig, Colorado years ago. Mm-hmm. And that is a long time ago. <laughs> and, you know, I was shooting just amateur. And, of course, you know, Jeff's shooting, you know, men's open pro. And I was used to watching him with these this camera crew around all the time because there used to be Wayne Pearson had the TV show at the time um, early on in the ASA arena. Mm-hmm. And there would be one camera behind you, one camera to the left, one camera to the right. And I would say to Jeff after the shoot down round, I was like, don't those cameras bother you? And he said, what cameras? No. Oh. <laughs> Clearly, I did not have the same feeling when one came out to follow me on uh-huh. the amateur oh, range. No. Oh no! And I pulled you. back. I pulled. Yes, he followed me. <laughs> Maybe they just came just to you know for enjoyment to walk all of the ranges. But anyway, you know, yeah, big camera behind me. Of course, I'm aware there's a big camera behind me, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I pull back and you know let down. Pull back, let down. Pull. I think I did that like three or four times. <laughs> and when I finally said, I am just shooting this arrow, I missed the whole target oh, completely. No. So oh, obviously <laughs> having the camera behind me did not have the same effect as being behind Jeff. Right. right. Yes. Yeah, so that was embarrassing. my most embarrassing <laughs> archery moment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rightfully so. <laughs> I've had a few of those when yeah. the cameras come up yeah. behind me. Just not necessarily a video camera, but just somebody taking, taking a picture. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I'm just like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> what am I going to look like in this? Oh, God. <laughs> well, that's how I look. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Well, you know, and I think... I know the feeling on that right. one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could see where that would be nerve-wracking. And then, mm -hmm. you know, they, they're, they like, following you. And since you're the wife of a pro, they're probably like, oh, she's probably great oh, shooter. Oh, she's probably and, really good. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. I, my goal was when Jeff and I would go out and shoot a range that I would shoot one arrow better than him. Oh, like okay. closer to center, like mm -hmm. you it's know, a good goal. A yeah, it is. Twelve, and he doesn't shoot a twelve. For me, that was my my goal was to shoot one arrow, out of, no matter how many we shot. Right, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, shoot one better than him. Yeah, and, and I usually and I usually was able to make that happen. <laughs> That's so good. I was pretty happy. Very good. Right. That's good. That's, That's why good. they were following you around, honey. Yeah. <laughs> they said, let's see if she can beat him. <laughs> no, clearly, clearly not. <laughs> clearly, it was not a career option for me. Right. <laughs> well, let me tell you, we've heard more, like. More just for enjoyment. Yeah. Yeah. We've heard a lot of embarrassing stories. So yeah. yeah. It's usually everybody has some doozies that they tell, like yes. dry firing or. Soap in your soap socks. In your putting, shoes. Having <laughs> soap in their mm -hmm. shoes, different mm -hmm. things like that. That's a good. Dropping yeah. their bow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, trying to remember. Happens. We've had a lot of good ones. So, mm -hmm. so and the reason That's we like awesome. to we like to do that because actually it just shows that everybody has yes. some really stupid stuff they've done mm -hmm. on the course. Right. Every, nobody's immune. Absolutely. That's right. That it doesn't matter truth. how great you are of a shot. Every shot is not going to be great. No. <laughs> Amen. That's good advice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's going to go in my little, um, my, my nerd journal, my archery nerd journal. I put little bits of wisdom. That, that's going to go in there. What is it? What, say it again. My archery nerd journal. I mean, but what is, what's the quote? Say it again, Tara. No matter how great of an archer you are. Every shot is not going to be great. Yeah, yes. that's perfect. Along that line. Yeah, yeah. That's pearls of wisdom. <laughs> yes. You get to hear this again and then yeah. again, again. Yeah, and so I can write it down. Yeah, yeah when she does uh -huh. the editing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. right. okay, so I think I think we're finally done. We had to, we had to throw in our couple of oddball questions. <laughs> right, that put we you had. on the spot no, a little I bit. It. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I've I've enjoyed I've enjoyed talking with you ladies tonight, and I thank each of you so much for everything that you do in the sport of archery. And thank you. You know. Um, very appreciative, yeah. and I appreciate you drawing the attention and the limelight onto the the DVAP program. Yep, right. and, and so we're it's excited to. It's see how disabled that's going. vet. Say it again. The website. Disabled veteran. Well, the website is DVAP dot org. D V A A P dot org. Okay. And Facebook is at Disabled Veterans Archery. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Instagram is DVAP underscore 2017. Okay. Okay. Right, well, we'll, we'll try to make sure we share all that stuff. Yeah. Well, it certainly Perfect. has been a pleasure. And if anybody's going to, you're going to be in Georgia, both of you, correct? Yes, okay. we will. And that is what? The 14th, 13th, 14th, mm -hmm. 12th, 13th, 14th? Yes. So it's in a couple the 12th weeks. 12th through the 14th. Yep. yep. So Anybody going to Georgia, please visit the, the DVAP booth and purchase your raffle tickets and mm -hmm. win that bow. Absolutely. Sounds good. I'll stop by and chit-chat. I won't awesome. be there, but I, I will I'd be like thinking that. about you. Awesome. <laughs> Maybe I'll send some money with um, Julie and have her buy me a raffle ticket. Well, let me, I could do it. Let me okay. tell you, Jim's trying to still finagle to go, <laughs> yeah. and he just had surgery last week. So. How, how is he feeling? He's feeling better. He has, he, like, some day, like, he'll go through part of the day feeling pretty good and then just get tired and weak. And I think that's part of the, um, you know, pain meds and because he normally doesn't take much in the way of pain medications or, sure. you know, and, of course, just the whole um, anesthesia and stuff. I think well, that's it, taken him a lot to And it also might be from. a reverse effect from what she's doing. She's putting bows in people's hands that need to de-stress. Well, Maybe him not being able to shoot is adding extra well, he's, stress. He has and, complained mm -hmm. about that a yeah. lot. But, um, yeah, I think it's a little too much to go on this trip. Mm -hmm. so. Poor guy. I don't, Even I don't it, blame you. Yeah. But Rent a station wagon. Let him lay in the back. <laughs> <laughs> With his bow. <laughs> Anyway. Well, you give them all. You give them all the best from the Hopkins family, and it's great will. to see the outpour of everybody in social media yeah, reaching out they, to him and you. And 
Yeah. Um, it's because you know, we're a good him to get group well. of people. You're, that's, you're, yeah. We're all in good company. Yes, we are. Yeah, mm-hmm. th- that is actually true. And that's why I kind of have a warm fuzzy about this podcast, too, and the disabled veterans thing. Because, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I put that on Facebook. Not necessarily. But I knew a lot. He's, he's so involved in the sport. I knew that people would say, hey, what's happened? And mm-hmm. so I thought I'd just go ahead and put it out there. And, oh, my gosh, out of the woodworks, everybody came and mm-hmm. prayers and everything. Yeah. And he's he went. I mean, he's doing exactly as the doctors would expect him to be. So, so that's great. Archery people are the best. Well, you yes. give them the best from us. All right. Yeah. I appreciate it. And we will share your information and go see Tara and um, Julie will run into you mm-hmm. down there and, and good luck to you guys and give us some updates too. And as we get I'll closer to the end of the year on the mentor programs and trying to drive some, some veterans your way to, to get some assistance. So cool. That would be great. Awesome. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much, ladies. Have Thank a great you. evening. All you right, too. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye, Tara. <laughs> Thank Bye-bye. you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Is that going to make any noise when I unplug? Oh, <laughs> Who's calling in? Should we talk so, to them next? Yeah. No. <laughs> is your refrigerator running? <laughs> so. Well, that's really cool. I really like that program. I do, too. I do, too. I think that they're headed in the right direction. With it now, I kept thinking I'll have to ask her, but Kim Rigney from Illinois does something with, I believe, with d- them disabled veterans. I don't know if it's the same program. Oh, I don't. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. She I'll, might be. I'll send her a message and ask her. But I kept thinking about Kim, and I know she's done some stuff. I thought it was with disabled veterans. It might just be veterans, but I'll mm-hmm. do some digging and and follow up on that and see. But, I don't know, but it's a it's a really great program, and it's. It's kind of interesting to hear how Jeff had that friend that... Yeah, just... Are you talking about pulling him out of the car and all that? Yeah. And just being there at the right time? I know. And, that's some karma mm-hmm. there. That's like that's like some, you know, their paths were meant to cross. And, right. And, well, and he did save his life, and I'm sure he's very grateful for all that. But he has this giant memory. His leg probably bothers him all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. there's that, too, that makes him remember daily right probably how much he appreciates him well and you know we've we've had conflict in the middle east for many years yeah. now and a pretty significant number of veterans now are younger have seen some stuff yeah mm-hmm. and, you know and we're getting they've, younger and younger even veterans. if they're physically able i mean they've seen some stuff mm-hmm. right and man i can't i can't even imagine i yeah you know i know vince has talked about yeah, he served in the Air Force back in like eighty seven, mm-hmm. eighty eight, eighty nine, ninety, and so that would have been Desert Shield and Desert Storm. And he went to Saudi Arabia, and he did come back home. He hurt his knee, but it was it was non combat. Right. It. He talks about though some of the things that he saw on the flight, like from there to Germany and from Germany back to the states of these guys who were wounded, and mm-hmm. you know he said it was a very humbling experience. To see what these guys sacrificed. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got a significant number of people now that, you know, have just been through a lot. Mm -hmm. And I can't even imagine what it'd be like to come back here and try just to Mm reassimilate to our normal American, very sheltered, (laughs) everyday. Sheltered, spoiled. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mundane life compared to what they've been through. And so... <clears throat> and you know the PTSD going back to that aspect of it it's it's always been there it's just i think we've advanced so much now with medicine and mental health we that it. we recognize it know mm-hmm. what it is work mm-hmm. on treating it mm-hmm. um my dad served in world war 2 and no, they he, did, they had almost no idea of how to treat it. No, and and those guys in World War II, they never really talked about it. But my mom has mentioned in the past how she thinks that now that we know so much about PTSD, mm-hmm. they didn't know what it was back then. But she says looking back on on seeing like the way he behaved, sometimes she's pretty sure that he had it. But back then, right? You know, there was nothing out there it wasn't mainstream public information or public knowledge sure. and so it's been around forever but um like i said you know we're, we're learning so much more about that aspect and you know technology as far as 
um, physical disabilities and, and helping people. And um, like you mentioned earlier, archery is one of those activities, one of those sports where it's so accommodating for so oh, for yeah. so many, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, there's you know, we've got an armless archer. There. <laughs> who is absolutely incredible I know. right mm-hmm. i mean you can have mm-hmm. you can have a lot of pretty significant disabilities and we still have be blind archers mm-hmm. yes i mean yes well we, sometimes i kind of <clears throat> shoot like i shoot that. like i yeah <laughs> i yeah, mean that was you. one of the more incredible things and mm-hmm. i mean some of those may be <laughs> wounded veterans i don't know right. didn't approach them and ask them but just to see how they shot and um, their tripod gets set up and, mm-hmm. um, you know, they know right where to put their hand up on the top of the tripod and how to aim. Mm-hmm. And, um, the gentleman at Vag at mm-hmm. Vegas that I was talking about, who's visually impaired, he's a veteran. Is yes. He? That was yeah. part of the group that I had shot with right. at Vegas. Yes. Before, yeah. yeah. So, well, and the cool thing about archery is, I don't know if it's in a healthy way or not, but it's you can it's like you can be so obsessed with it. It you it can. gets under mm-hmm. your skin like I've got to figure this out. And so your focus really goes towards more about you know shooting and shooting techniques and mm-hmm. hitting the middle and mm-hmm. blah blah blah. You start to forget your day to day. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. You do forget your life. I know. Yeah. It, yeah. It becomes an obsession. Or you do you shoot arrows or, in the backyard and don't mow the yard. <laughs> that happens too. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, was I supposed to do the dishes? <laughs> oh, I'm shooting. <laughs> Y'all wanted to eat? Oh, I I'm forgot busy. To, I forgot to cook. Yeah, Those? sorry, guys. You're on your own again. <laughs> I'm shooting. <laughs> Archery. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches <laughs> for the third night in a row. <laughs> I got to get this figured out. <laughs> you want to supersize your <laughs> your Big Mac meal? Yeah. <laughs> well, why don't you give everybody a, a quick rundown of what happened with Jim? Oh, um, oh gosh. Is because it, you it, allude, it? you know, you guys talk, you and Tara talked yeah. about it a little bit, but to give everybody the backstory so, on it. So, um, yeah, and I'm sure most of our audience knows because I, a lot of, you know. Yeah. Anyway. But, um, you know, he just, he'd been a while. He was having some pressure in his lower back. He thought his back was out. And this has been going on for about a month or so. And then the last week or so, trying to, every, all my timelines are really Mm -hmm. mixed up. But anyway, he started having like abdominal pain, like, you know, like he was constipated actually is what he thought. We got in through Sunday. We went to that shoot. We went to a local 3D Towards the middle of that, he really started complaining about his stomach hurting. So he came home. I drove home. He took some ibuprofen. He barely ate that night. He went to work the next day, came home about noonish, still stomach hurting. I had a thing for Anna at school that night. And then so I came home, and he's on the couch holding his belly and grimacing and all this. I'm like, no, we're going to the ER. I'm sick of looking at your face like that. <laughs> <laughs> fix your face, man. Fix your face. <laughs> We're going to the ER to fix well, your face. Well, I mean, it was just like, it was just slowly getting worse and worse and worse. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is not getting better. And, and, and you're into it. Yeah. Now so get him off the couch and get him. We got good. up there and there she's, he's describing his lower back and abdominal pain. And she's like, well, you know, it might be kidney stones or something like that. And they did the CT scan. And by this time it's Monday night, like 1130 ish or so. And pretty soon the they did the you know the CT scan and Jim and I are talking about how we're going to deal with his kidney stones because we're pretty sure that's what it is, and she comes in she goes um so I've called a vascular surgeon and you have an aneurysm on your abdominal aorta, on the abdominal portion of your aorta so your aorta is your main, main artery vein. that mm-hmm. comes from your heart it goes clear down through your chest. Through your abdomen, it splits apart in your lower abdomen Mm -hmm. to your femoral arteries. And the size of your aorta down there is supposed to be like, what, two centimeters? Mm -hmm. And his was six. His was ballooned out. Kind of like if a garden hose had a bubble in it Mm -hmm. or something like that. So, and I mean, then it was like game on. We kind of looked at like, we didn't even really have time to absorb what was going on. I mean, that doctor was there in 15 minutes. Mm. They started having him do paperwork, doing his blood work, asked when he ate. They had him wheeled off to surgery within probably 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah, pretty mm-hmm. quick. 
you know it's <coughs> serious when or it, yeah it's potentially serious it's potentially serious but the really odd thing was like the doctor came in and they put stent grafts in and they didn't cut them all the way open they went in endoscopically mm -hmm. am i saying that right mm -hmm. yeah through his femoral arteries mm -hmm. and they just insert these stent grafts which right. basically are like tubing as you know they put up in there through your your artery and it just replaces all the blood flow to what it's supposed to be like right um and he came in like he was changing a carburetor yeah it's like this and we're gonna go in through here and we're gonna do this and this and <laughs> so i felt actually better because it was very clear that this man had done this a lot right. <laughs> <laughs> and he had done it a lot so yeah. i felt pretty comfortable there but he's just sore you know he's not used to anesthesia well, he's now, not used to pain it, meds but he had some pain in his legs and had to go in for a second surgery yeah he came out of the first surgery yeah and he Mr. Fix It didn't fix it Mr. quite. Mr. Fix as It good. didn't quite get it, <laughs> but he was screaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the nurse, they had him take him up to ICU, and the nurse was like, couldn't understand why his leg was hurting, and she thought he was just confused and because of the anesthesia. And he was like, "No, my leg really hurts," and he's yeah. rolling all around. She's trying to make him lay still, and he ain't having it. And, so they called the surgeon back, and he came right back up, and they took him in for a second one. So he had like a, I don't know, the way it was explained to me, a little bit of blockage, a little bit of plaque in that artery, and then also there was some sort of like a, a kink or something in one of those grafts that was, he wasn't getting good blow, blood flow, blood flow to his left leg. <laughs> so anyway. What? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So... Blood flow. <laughs> you said blow, but whatever. <laughs> he wasn't getting that either. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that supposed <laughs> to cause better blood? <laughs> blood flow. Take some away from places I heard. Exactly. Well, that's true. <laughs> it, or it improves blood flow in some areas. Right. Okay. But um, so, yeah, he, it was a night and day difference between the first surgery and the second surgery. And we'll mute her. Can you mute her? <laughs> I'm not. I just. I <laughs> did. <laughs> I'm looking at your mouth. <laughs> Talking. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> See? I was trying to be good. <laughs> oh, I'm going to throw up. I'm laughing so hard trying not to laugh. <laughs> oh, Do you need a drink? <laughs> I need a drink. Where's that wine? Oh, we didn't get any this time. Oh. So anyway, so he's doing much better. So they fixed Good. his blood flow. They they did that, and he had to stay in the hospital a couple of days, and oh. yeah. So it's good. Walking. And you've been a very good nurse. No, I'm a terrible nurse. Are I you? mean, yeah. He's. They all tell me that too. Is it because you get frustrated that they're sick? No, I'm just a mean person. Oh, okay. I think. You I are know. not a mean person. Come on. <laughs> you wouldn't have all these critters if you were mean. I like, <laughs> I'm, yeah, well, and my mother used to even, because my mother had been really sick several years ago and I had to nurse her a lot and she started calling me Nurse Ratchet. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> well you know jim's gonna want you to wear a naughty nurse outfit at some point no <laughs> no he um but like you know i'm like get up move around take your pill eat something you know i'm more like a dictator kind of nurse well it's a good thing you were <laughs> right very you, on it. you know yeah. mean to him to make Pers him go in the first place mm -hmm. you know he didn't argue with me that he was i think he, he was, was tired of yeah, yeah he was tired of having the pain and it wasn't it was clearly not getting any better mm -hmm. right so well, well, good for so, all of that to happen the way it did. Yeah. And I'm glad he's on the road to recovery. And I'm sorry that he's sitting, in, you know, up there on his chair wishing he was at a shoot because we all know that it's, he'd be there if he could. Yeah, right. you know, it, it we sucks. Were, we were in ICU and I'm like, um, we're talking about, he's talking about how many weeks away Georgia is. We need to go in to have another CT scan to make sure everything's in the right place and I'm like, you're not going anywhere till you have that CT scan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, you know, maybe. And <laughs> he's I'm trying like, to find a loophole. <laughs> he was. I saw his wheels churning. I was like, are you kidding me now? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. And I. And Mama it's hard. put her foot down. It's hard for him because he had such. Heck, we he shot really good Sunday when we were at that local 3D. Mm -hmm. He was shooting killer. Mm -hmm. Like. And that's not helping anything. What? Like, the fact that he was that shooting, he was shooting yeah, so shooting well. well and no, I know. It, yeah. And so, yeah, it's not helping to 
curb his desire no. to go. No, now he really, really wants to go because right. he's been kind of on a roll. Yeah. Right. So this is, you know. Yeah, but but also he needs to stay on that roll. And if he was to go and get, be in any sort of pain or have a bad day because he couldn't. Tomorrow um, he can start. Like it had to be a week, so he can start lifting more than five or ten pounds by tomorrow. So I he'll be down here tomorrow shooting his bow. I bet probably. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and then he'll be hurting. And but if you get out there and he doesn't shoot well, and then it puts him in a different mindset, might as well not even do that. He needs to stay home, like you said, and keep on his roll. Mm-hmm. Just let him shoot well, here mm-hmm. if he can. Yeah, he just needs to stay local till yeah. till we get a little bit further past this and he has that other cuz that's too far away, too far away from home to be. Right. If right. something goes right. wrong with his stand. His tubulars. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. And didn't you say that the doctor or the surgeon said that this is actually very common? Did they tell you that? I mean, I read yeah, up on it after you let us know what was going on. It's not that of a thing. It really isn't. Yeah. Um, so men in your 50s, should, if you get, you know, regular checkups, get a CT scan. Because mm-hmm. they said a lot of times people have aneurysms, don't even know it. Oh. Mm-hmm. You you don't know it unless a symptom comes up. There's no right. way to really know it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Keith's you know? aunt had a brain aneurysm. And sometimes you just don't make it back from that Mm -hmm. no no if this thing would have burst it had been game Mm -hmm. over so hers bursted and she lived right but she had to do a ton of stuff rehab Mm -hmm. all that Mm because it really affected everything up there but she's back to normal i'm sure but yeah definitely get checked out makes me want to go get checked out. but yeah but it's not it's not an uncommon thing you know i mean like and even the surgeon was like even the nurses knew him and and they talk they call them triple a's abdominal aortic aneurysm Hmm. the nurses were like oh yeah with his you know this doctor's triple a's we do blah 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 they Mm -hmm. they were not that uncommon so well okay and on another note if you want to go into the medical field apparently that's the one to go into because you're not going to have a shortage of a job job security (laughs) (laughs) if they're that coming (laughs) yeah I, yeah, I don't know if they're that common, but they're not as uncommon uh, yeah, as, as uncommon as you would think. Well, when you sent that to us, that message, and I, I was on like on online. I'm like, okay, I've got to look this up. I mean, is this bad? You I know, know. Yeah. it's like, okay, we, I've, you know, anytime I hear aneurysm, I think, oh, I did bad, too. And bad, when they bad. said aortic, I automatically mm-hmm. think of your heart, mm-hmm. right? Well, it is the it is it a, is a part. Of, yeah, yeah. I mean, just, all of it comes from the heart, basically. Right. But being the aortic being mm-hmm. the large one yeah yeah worry so. about that guy all yeah. right girls anything so anyway, else i'm yeah, glad he's doing better don't and... have aneurysms people mm-hmm. yeah and donate to disabled veterans archery assistance yes. program. yeah <laughs> there yeah. you go yeah and before we leave tonight i'll put a link to their website cool up. yeah cool. Yeah, I was. I thought it was a really neat program, and she's been really nice and mm-hmm. and definitely promoting it. And so yeah, sounds like she's a good all in person for and, it. I mean, to spend eight hundred and fifty bucks just to get a non for profit started, jeez. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I mean, right there just makes you need to donate. Yeah, it kind of is a. It's kind of a. What do you call it? A disincentive to start. Yes. An mm-hmm. organization, isn't it? Yeah. The government. Ugh. They need their pieces of it. I know. I know. So anyway, but yeah, I I'd love to see the program keep growing. It would be would so too. cool to go to an archery, a big archery tournament, have a group, mm-hmm. kind of like you know, yeah, you used to have all the S three D A kids show up, yeah. but these wouldn't be kids. Yeah. Yeah. But and it may grow into that. Yeah. Just one step at a time. They're. I mean, really, they're still pretty much in their infancy. Mm-hmm. from the way it sounded well and and it may turn into not only for um the veterans but maybe for their families as well mm-hmm. um and be a large group well and yeah you kind of you kind of touched on it earlier too so many times you know archery uh, archery definitely is a very family oriented or can be a very family oriented sport yeah and so Usually. even if you have veterans that are maybe having trouble because of a, yeah. a PTSD or something like that, and sometimes it's hard to reconnect with your families when you've been gone for deported, 
mm-hmm. for extended periods. <laughs> right, of, right. <laughs> extended periods of time. So this would be a great way to, to even help. To get your families back right. together. I mean, you want to spend as much time. You don't want to send your father or your grandfather out when you've been missing them for so long. You might as well just join it with them. Right, yeah. right. That would be a cool program if they could make it more, you know, a family mm-hmm. deal. Because yeah, like you said, it's it's not just about the person deployed. It is definitely about the whole family and what they all have to go through. Yep, exactly. So, mm-hmm. anyway, well, I think that's it. Um, mm-hmm. Big tournaments. Oh, we had some, you know, what we just came off of the uh, Yankton. Yankton shoot. Mm-hmm. South um, Dakota Classic. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People are heading out, starting already, heading out to Reading. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's this coming weekend. Yes. So, I know that Thunder. Jim Forbes mm-hmm. and Toby are going. Yeah. So maybe one of them will get on the phone with us later and tell maybe us how that went. Maybe we should just tell them to come over. Afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That would um, be. It's not like they're far they're, and they know where you live. Right. That's uh-huh. true. And we saw them the other day. And um, they're going to Reading. And the following weekend is... Augusta. Augusta. Mm-hmm. And then what are else happens? Are you going happens? to Augusta? We are. Yeah. Oh, that, that's where she's going to have her booth. Yes. yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then I think there's a lull for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Let's see. Augusta is next Mother's Day. weekend, Mother's Day weekend. And then London will be the first weekend in, in June. June. So like three weeks between. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's not much. Shoots, I'm participating in a bow fishing tournament for the first Are time you in really? like five years. Wow, that'll be fun. Um, on Mother's Day weekend, yeah. Oh, that's cool. I had to ditch my mom so I could go shoot fish. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. I chose a fish over you. <laughs> I haven't got to do it in a long time. That'll Sorry. be cool. Where's it going to be at? Yeah. Lake of the Ozarks. Is it? Mm-hmm. And when and When are you doing that? Mother's uh, Day weekend. Be, yes. Is it like Bennett Like Springs Saturday or? and Sunday or just one? I don't. It's a four-person team. I was asked to be on the team. Oh, I feel so accepted. You. Wow. Um, I have outshot all of them, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> My fish was bigger. But anyway. <laughs> brag about it. <laughs> no. Um. Uh, I don't know if it's both days. Usually they run one. Um, there's like an Iron Man that runs overnight, right? All day, all night. Um, we're not doing that. It's a daytime shoot, so I think it's just one day. And so, is it? Do you win it based on like the weight of all the fish that you get? You know, I don't know all. Uh, like you I, don't know the rule. Like, You're just gonna go shoot some stuff, and... right? Um, th- I've been in tournaments before where it's been um, like they pick what it's gonna be during that tournament. You don't know. Until beforehand that way people can't put fish in freezers oh, um, oh wow does that so, happen oh i just saw something the other day about somebody got caught cheating mm-hmm. in a fishing tournament mm-hmm. really yeah so sometimes you'll go and there'll be a tournament and they'll say okay it's biggest buffalo or biggest gar or biggest this or biggest that or it's a 12 fish stringer or, um, but if it's a turn, if it's a team thing, then isn't the combined of all of yours? It would or? be a combined of all of us. Right. But it could go off of largest gar, largest buffalo. Oh. It could go off that. I'm not, I, honestly, I don't know the you get full details cause I was just invited. So I'm s- whatever it is, I'll be fu- having fun. But, um, and is I Keith like going to shoot thing. it too. Or uh-huh, yeah. Did anybody ask him to be on? on the team yeah yeah they asked it's us both. it was kind of like oh you're both on deal. the same team i was kind of probably the last one they thought about but <laughs> I, was I wouldn't tell keith that i'd say uh they just they brought you along because you're my husband so. <laughs> yeah right they really wanted me but <laughs> yeah right they just um, have to take you because uh-huh. we're, <laughs> we're married <laughs> that thing that's a package deal yeah. now but yeah i have seen frozen fish come in at a weigh in wow and are they and, stiff frozen yes that's how oh I know. Oh my gosh. Like they look like sardines Aren't in a bucket. Aren't they even smart enough to thaw the dang thing out? Well, see what they say is they throw ice on them to hold their weight. Well, you can throw ice on, but I'm pretty sure in the heat of the summer, it's not going to freeze them Rock stiff. solid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that goes on. Um, some of the tournaments, though, are pretty cool. You can, like, they'll have it, you'll meet in Warsaw. Um, and you can go on the Lake of the Ozarks. You can go on Truman Lake. You can go to Table Rock. You can go anywhere within missouri to fish that means ponds lakes you know anything in missouri so that's kind of fun too when they have a 24-hour deal and you can go to anywhere 
So you find your guys going to the big ponds and shooting the big grass carp that have been there for 40 years or whatever. Right. So there's that too. So you have to contend with that. So you, you know, you think outside the box of what can you do. So that's when people get crafty and put them in the freezer. But anyway, we've never done anything like that. I have, I have put a gar in the freezer before. The girls caught a baby tiny gar. Actually, I caught a couple of them, and they did have smallest. They had small scar. That was one of the categories. So I was going to take him, my tiny little gar that was like thinner than. I don't know, the inside ink cartridge of a, wow. a pen. That's how little they were. Um, but then we, you know, we didn't have that category. Not that they would have believed me, by the way. I was just going to have fun. Um, but <laughs> then I was going to shellac them and make them into earrings, and that never happened either. So, <laughs> Ooh, what if they got, when they get stinky? I was going to shellac them. Yeah, I'd yeah. still be like, <laughs> Annalisa, you smell. <laughs> you smell all. Well, garish today we'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> no here yeah. have a here have a mint yeah <laughs> get those earrings off <laughs> <I can't. clears throat> all, all right anyway. sorry anyway. I, I, i'm working on our our, our post here <coughs> cool all right all well right. okay check that's us out on. bo mm-hmm. divas podcast Facebook page. I think yeah. that's all we're in. Bo Diva's podcast. Uh, she does Instagram, I think. Do, every yeah, once what's the Instagram? What's the Instagram, uh, Julie? Uh, well, I don't we know. Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. So I just started a new one, and it's the underscore Bo underscore Diva. Diva. Okay. And I'm, why don't you know what happened? I don't. I don't know. It's it like it's gone, and I can't. Yeah, can't get back into we it. We probably have fifty of them that are like probably. <laughs> that are, that are, We've so, got all of the Bo Diva ones. Yeah, and since I was doing basically the majority of the posting on the Instagram, yeah. I'm just like I'm just going to put anything archery that I come across archery related. It's going on that one. So right. all the Bo Diva stuff will go on that one from now on. Okay. Unless something weird happens the and it unlinks itself Bo to my underscore Diva. The underscore, underscore Bo underscore Diva. Okay. The Bo Diva. I didn't do the underscores that, well, I guess when you hit Kinda the space button, it, it does it. So oh, okay. anyway, it'll be fine. Um, all right. Yeah. And then mostly on Facebook, if you want to get a hold of us and tell us how cool we are or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even though we already know, but it, you, you can go ahead and tell us. <laughs> yeah. If you have a question about anything we've talked about on any of the podcasts that you want to be answered, um, we'll probably be having a giveaway maybe the next time we get together. Um, we got tons of stuff still, and yes, we just we keep do. acquiring more stuff. And not that we are unappreciative of any of that, but we need to get it out to you all. Yes, so, we do. Um, we'll probably be doing that the next time we get together. So. Yeah, we'll try to announce it a time or two ahead, uh, maybe a day or two ahead. So we can get some people. We'll do a better job of manufacturing a few what? questions. We don't do a good job. We we like on the fly figuring out questions. Like, Pick a number. <laughs> Pick How a many num- fingers am I holding up? <laughs> what number we is always in have Julie's the best head right questions. now? <laughs> We uh, always say that we're going to have this ahead of time, be prepared, do. and we never are. <laughs> How many yards was the target that Julie shot <laughs> Friday night <laughs> in her backyard <laughs> from the same spot she always shoots? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and only one person could answer. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> All right. And it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you weren't sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we do a great job at this. Yeah. We just have to keep telling ourselves that until I we know. get it right. I right? know, exactly. <laughs> well, hey, everybody, thanks for listening and um, check us out and find download, their booth. Download the podcast. Yes, please visit mm-hmm. Disabled Veterans Archery Assistance Program booth in Georgia and at all of the ASA events. And yeah, you'd be helping them out a lot to, to go ahead and buy those raffle tickets and. Yeah. Help them raise money. And and mm-hmm. the only way we get bigger and bigger is if you share and um, put us out there on your pages. And, um, I mean, we do a pretty good job. But if y'all want to share our page or, yeah. or any of our podcasts, go right ahead. Right. Feel free. And that would be much appreciated, too, because one of our goals for having the podcast is to <coughs> tell people's story and get their word out. So right. the more people that are aware of us, then the more we can get Rich. like DVAP mm-hmm. out there mm-hmm. in, you know, to mm-hmm. get people aware of it and yep, the other works. people that we've talked to in the organizations. 
Right. Okay, Otto, you're not in charge of everything. Oh, yes, he, he is. He is. He he's is. been, everybody, he's been crawling on the table trying to be in charge of the whole mm-hmm. everything. So. Yes. Yep. He's such a diva. I know. Yes. He goes, anyway. you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> I think he's about to turn off our recording. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think All he right. just wants his mommy. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.